I wasn't even there. Please welcome Chris and Ola. Yay! <laughs> You've got oh. it again, Ola Jordan. Stop it! Okay. Stop it. Well, no, because it, I really like making people sob. No, I don't mean it. But, um, <laughs> but did you just... Can you believe... What, what is it that makes you emotional? The fact that you're, you're going with this boy, hopefully... <sighs> all the way to the end well, but the, if not you've got so far well the thing is we never thought we we're gonna <laughs> get so far in a competition and because i'm enjoying it so much dancing with chris as well it means more to me so yeah i'm quite emotional oh <laughs> i think she's just thinking oh, i've got to go back training with him oh, <laughs> no. oh is it also because you know where you are on the leaderboard and you know the amount of people who Phoned. You have never been in a dance off, so you two are incredibly popular. Does that make you very happy? Well, I think people just just see how much fun we've got, and and when we go out there, we perform with everything. Hmm. We're giving hundred fifty percent, and that's why I always say to Chris, just go out there and enjoy yourself. Yeah. That is the key word. Whenever yeah. I'm having a bit of a nightmare, and whenever they say Chris and Ola, will you go to the dance floor? The last words that Ola says to me. Just go and enjoy it. <laughs> because we're not going to beat the big boys. We're not, ever. But we've got to go out there and give it our best shot. And it works. And I, if the people at home love it, I'm, we're really pleased. We are really pleased. Because obviously we're doing something right if people at home yeah. love it. And, and it's what Darcy said, actually. She said, you sell it. And Vincent said it yesterday, that you guys just go out and it's not apologetic. It's like, we're on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes we, you know, people say, oh, you're in the semi-finals. What? Because we haven't actually seen it as much of a competition because we turn up on Monday and say, and Ola goes, right, Chris, we're doing this one. Right, and we do it non-stop, we're in our own little cocoon, and we go out on Saturday, keep our fingers crossed <laughs> that we survive, and all of a sudden we're in the semi-finals. And it is an incredible, incredible thing. It is amazing feeling to be here still. We didn't think we'd make Blackpool. And, no. and having another chance to, to train and practice because we're really enjoying yeah. um, training. Len said, Len said, uh, albeit only this week, but never mind, he said, he said, am I seeing a dancer emerging? Do you now feel, because it's almost, you have to believe in yourself as well, do you think I am dancing? Yeah, I mean, it is, it is encouraging. It's fantastic to hear Len at long last saying, I think you're dancing. You know, it might be a bit late, but I, it always goes back to the first week when I walked into the studio and I couldn't count to eight to the music. Yeah. And Ola was looking at me thinking, what have I done? What have I done? But she said in the very first lesson, I believe in you. I think you've got something. And now, it has taken a long time. It, I seem to be believing Ola now. Yes. And it's is, it is really great. And I don't fear anything anymore. I just can't wait to go and do it. And that's, I think, the big difference, isn't it? Also, the other thing that you've always done, like, like the other semi finalists, you've trained incredibly hard. There's never been a day where you've got, oh, do you know what? Should we just have a cheese sandwich and not do it today? I mean, you've worked, haven't you, Ola? I mean, We've worked really hard. And obviously, it's not an excuse, but Chris got a work as well in the mornings. And he comes in with his smile on his face. And I'm, I'm coming in going, <laughs> oh, my God, I've got to really work hard here. And he's coming in with a smile on his face and he's working hard every day. Yeah. He's been just amazing. I think if you're not a natural, there's only one way to try and make yourself into a dancer, and that is working really hard. And if left, right, left is really tough <laughs> and it takes you three hours to get it right, you're going to have to do six hours to get left, right, left, right, left, right. Um, and that's the way we work. And I think... What makes us work really hard as well is because we're, we're there on the bottom now yeah. and we, we just you want it. We want it. We want to go out there and just perform the best dance we possibly can. And Because and every yeah, dance yeah. now, we feel, is going to be like... I know it's a really naff thing to say, but, yeah. you know, whether the rumba or, or the Argentine tango, it could be our last dance because we're going to be at the bottom. Let's first talk about the Argentine tango. Very intricate. How are you finding it? I mean, it suits you, doesn't it? Well, it's difficult, it. especially because I never done it. So it's like, whoa, what were we doing here? I'm, I'm making mistakes, more mistakes than Chris. So it's like, whoa, you know, I'm sorry, I'm making mistakes. We have to, you know, But you need to, to do lots of kicks, and you're very good at kicks. Just, oh, really? Wait, yeah, have a look at this. My dad, as a footballer, used to tell me to practice with both feet, and I never listened to him. But who would have thought I'd have to pay for it with Ola? Kick, kick. I'm not kicking like I'm kicking a football. Gotta be in control of my kicks. I want to see the toes. I don't want to see the heel. I tend to have football kicks rather than dancing kicks. If you play football like this, you look an idiot. Yeah, I'm 
must admit, so due to some of our moves, we should have worn shin pads because you've got to get your little feet in between other people's yeah. legs. Yeah, and you kicked me a couple of times. I've had a few cracks you? as well. I kicked you as well. Yeah. Oh, very, yeah. very quickly, the rumba. Oh, that's a brave choice. I, I went. <gasps> I know. I know, know you were brilliant at it. I know, but that was uh, 17 months if ago. If you've been to our training, and when we've had a bad time, I w I've always said, oh, then why can't we do the rumba again? And she always said, if we get to the semi-final, I'll let you do the rumba. Yeah. And it's suddenly and come back. Here. And I'll tell you something, we are having a brilliant time doing okay. it. So, in a way, whether it's good or bad, I can't do anything yeah. about it. But we have had every single second in training, we love it, and I'm so glad we're going back. OK, guys, good luck, and thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Chris and Ola. <laughs> Now, do you remember life before Strictly? It was a dark place, barren of sequins, fake tan and grown men gyrating in tight-fitting shirts. But now even the government has launched their own dancing initiative. Here's how the nation caught Strictly fever. Where can I begin with how Strictly has affected the ballroom industry? Just under 10 years ago, dancing studios were closing down. It was the most uncool thing to do for children to learn to dance. Fast forward to today, it is quite the reverse. We are seeing dance studios opening. We are seeing children learning to interact and going out dancing. Since Strictly's been on the television, the number of inquiries for lessons has more than doubled. My favourite dance probably the jive. Because it's just, I just enjoy doing it, and it's great fun learning. It's just really fun, and it's not too, it's not like really pressurised or anything. But you're not and just it's sitting so down so watching so telly. You're just you're having fun doing dancing. Schools that used to do panto, they're now doing these these strictly events where they're getting the children to dance. Nice to see you. To see you. The parents are loving to come along. It's affected such a broad stream of things. It's incredible. We get a teacher, and we've been teaching them to dance for the last couple of months. And then we do it in a big show with judges. When I left this morning, I thought I was going to Strictly. So I got so excited, but it feels like it. I think Strictly's had a lot to do with this event, and since it's been on, everyone talks about it. And all, all ages talk about dancing. We are seeing boyfriend and girlfriend going out learning to dance. Husband and wives that used to sit at home and argue over what they were going to cook for dinner, they're now looking forward to what they're going out for that evening to learn at their dance school. You get to meet people of all different personalities. We would recommend anyone, really, to come. You don't have to be a dancer. You've got a lot of like-minded people, and we made a lot of good friends uh, through, through dancing. We're a nation that love to dance. Well, today is the launch of the Dance Champions group, and we are championing dance. Well, Dance Champions is about putting some inspiring and motivational people out there to actually encourage people to think about taking up dance as a way of getting fit and keeping fit. It's absolutely amazing that through Strictly Come Dancing, it's really inspired the government to get involved, to get people active, to put money, to put time behind this project. Strictly Come Dancing has ignited a huge amount of interest around the country. We hope to get 100,000 people up and dancing who are not at the moment. It's about people looking after and promoting their own health and, and dance in a really fun way. Strictly has done so much for the world of dance. They brought in glamour, they brought in celebrities and they showed the public what real dancing is all about.